Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me, they long to be close to you. We want to welcome you. I'm Dr. Willie Jolly, and this is my beautiful bride. It's D. D, let's see what glasses she has on today. What color her hair is today? What her nails look like today? Show your nails. They're that plain. Oh, they're plain. Because right. white and gray. All right, white and gray. Anyway, we're the authors of the book, Make Love, Make Money, Make It Last, 10 Secrets to Shake. A great marriage. We've been married for going on 38 years, haven't had an argument in over 35 years, and we're grateful. And we're the host of the popular new TED Talk. It's available at jollymarriage.com. Go watch it. Happy is how never to argue again in marriage. How to never, ever argue again in marriage. And uh, we've been married 38 years, haven't had an argument in 35. Okay, so go watch it. And then we ask everybody to do us a favor. Share it. Share it. We're trying to get a million views and we're trying to get it quick. So we need your help. So let's push First it out. The person you send it to might not need it, but they may know of somebody who needs That's it. That's good. See? That's very Because it takes the pressure off. You need this. You know what? Send this to somebody that you know might need it. You know, you're so smart. That's why I. I, I, I That's why I, you keep me. I, why I married you. I mean, I I married you because you were smart. Now you were pretty and gorgeous and sexy and all of that, but you were smart. And Mama told me, don't marry no dumb women. Whatever you do, don't marry no dumb woman because they're gonna be nothing but trouble. Yes, I am still on Sirius XM Dennis O'Neill. I'm on channel 141. Uh, HUR Voices, and you can catch me every week at Saturday at 4 o'clock on channel 141, and then it re-airs Tuesday and Thursday at 6 p.m., uh, the same show. Well, we just had um, David Rubenstein and John Maxwell. We've had, uh, this week, we've got Ann McNeil, like uh, uh, Neil, like uh, yours, O'Neill. She's McNeil, N-E-I-L-L. And she's in construction. She's one. She's the president of the Black Women Construction Owners of America, and she's the author of How to Raise a Baby Billionaire. Incredible. Story, Wonderful incredible woman lesson. Too. Uh, great Very lesson. Very financially successful. And sad. She talks about her bumps and bruises and things that she did not know about giving her money to a financial planner that disappeared. Right. So she. That's enough said about that. You can listen on XM or you can listen on my podcast, which is free. Okay. The podcast, the Willie Jolly Wealthy Race podcast, is available on um, iHeartRadio. C-Suite Radio, Spotify, Stitcher, TuneIn, and so Apple Podcasts. So you can just go to podcasts and just put in yeah. Willie Jolly. Well, you can go to your favorite podcast. Yes, you can. You can go to your favorite podcast. Mm -hmm. uh, I go to my platform. podcast app and just put your name in. That's okay. what I do. Okay. Well, yeah. You can go, and you can hear all the interviews there. Okay. Mm -hmm. Let's get going. We're going to talk tonight about uh, my son was here. If y'all saw the promo today, and y'all saw my son in the promo, he's uh Great guy. William's a great, great guy. We are so grateful. And so William came by and said his friends are having a challenge and wanted advice. We said, can we talk about it tonight? He said they would be appreciative if you would. Uh, yeah, five sides and four sides. That's it, Terrence. You got it. Um, but here is the issue. His friends are professionals. Uh, he's an attorney and they're professional. They work in the professional arena. They built a very successful business together. They made a lot of money together, but he said they're not friends and their marriage is on the rocks and they need advice. And uh, they have two young children. And two young children. What, 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 what the, they, Here's what a, a subtitle that I... Uh, what we called it was... Uh, what teen, did you say? Uh, what creating, did you and William say? We said making money. How, what happened when you're making money, you're married, you're making money, you have an organization, you have a team, but you're not friends. And you have a subpart. My subtitle was, can business partners become marriage, successful marriage partners? I thought that was a good So subtitle. why don't you, yeah, that's a good subtitle. So that said, why don't you go right into when you were coming to come work with me uh, from your- I was already working with you. It was relatively Paul, new. Oh, stop, stop. I'm not, not the question. Oh, I'm sorry. When we went to conventions and you said you were going to leave your job and come work with me, what was the standard? Absolutely in? not. Yeah, why? What would they say? 
Well, that was the overriding response. Don't work with your husband if you want to keep married. And peaceful. Mm -hmm. So we got that from a, num a number of people. Ah, but we got a different answer from a few others, like Jim and Naomi Rohde, mm -hmm. who said- They own smart practice that they sold to their son-in-law, who's also a dentist, and smart practice supplies the dental ancillary items that used to be the cards that you would send out as reminders that reminders of appointment the cards appointment, all that the little packs that we still get when you go to the dentist a little that has a little bit of floss and a soft toothbrush and a they because we've actually been to their warehouse amazing a, a hundred million dollar company they supply all that and in several countries but anyway yeah but they sold it to their son-in-law but the answer is it can work. It can work. My subtitle I thought was easy to focus on. Can business partners become good marriage partners? Mm. Okay. Well, why don't and you... I think the answer is it depends. Well, it depends on what we're going to give I'm them saying, the good advice it about. We've done it. Okay. And we're going to tell That's them. That's because I'm so easy going and such a wonderful person to work with. There you go. Is that, is that the secret? Absolutely. <laughs> sometimes my boss is a bear. But I'm just wonderful, <laughs> easygoing. Yes, sir. Yes, I know exactly <laughs> what to do. Who, who controls everything? Her. All right, so let's talk about it. And the fact is, it does depend, though, on it depends. It depends. how your marriage is structured. Mm. And are you friends? And that's where we really want to focus on. Because people, as for those who might not have the book, which I recommend everybody get the book, chapter number one lays the foundation for a great marriage, a great relationship. Friends first. Friends first. So, see, look, people get married for all sorts of reasons. Oh, please don't, don't say that. You got to have a different reason. <laughs> You were going to say people get married for all sorts of reasons. Yeah. yeah. A green card. Yeah. What, give me some other reasons well, why people oh, might get married other, somebody, than other than love. Just, just just tell me something different. Other than love? Because mm. somebody got knocked up? <laughs> <laughs> all right. Gonna kind of all right. It's going to be that kind of evening. We're going to talk in real talk. Somebody got knocked up. Somebody uh, looked good. They got a nice car. They got a fancy house. They. You know, as Les Brown said, when you make money, people find your earlobes uh, cute. They'll find something cute on you. Anyway, whatever the reason why people get married, that's that. the number one thing we found for successful marriages is that they are friends. Well, you know what I think? I think they were business partners, so <laughs> they had commonality. They were able to get along with... Well, you can get... And, you can, and I think... We know people must get... must a measure of respect. But as William said, the they pandemic. discovered when they had to all live under the same roof at the same time. The pandemic did it, man. He said the pandemic did it. Yeah. William kept saying the pandemic did it, man, because so now, they what? had to now deal with each other in intense So they really didn't know each other. That's right. From that perspective. That's right. So what we want to say mean? is, first, that it is very possible to have a business and a successful and happy marriage. But what are your reasons? And, and also, what's your foundation? So Dee is going to tell a story about uh, when she used to work at a corporate for the uh, American Management Association as a corporate trainer. This was 30 years ago. And, okay, so, uh, and a, a so grocery I was, chain executive. I, I, I was a trainer in communication presentation skills for American Management Association. That's the name of the organization. Okay. And they're very, still very prominent. Headquarters, mm -hmm. I think, in New York. Mm -hmm. I work out of as an independent consultant in the D.C. office. Okay. And so my job was to present, persuade, and to teach executives and corporations which send executives to those ongoing standard cookie cutter communication presentation programs because they needed their executives to be able to persuade and influence. Okay. Mm -hmm. And and so this particular 
grocery chain executive was a vice president. Okay. And a very good guy. So over the course of, and most of the programs were three or four days. Mm -hmm. And we talked about the interaction, how to make others feel comfortable, all of that. And he asked me about, because I would speak about my husband and then I work with my, and, and it intrigued him. Mm. So that's how that kind of conversation started. And we ended up him saying, you know what? I'd like to take you and your husband to dinner after the program in a week or so based upon your schedule because you were also traveling. Right. Right. And his curiosity came in that you work together and you love each other and you seem to respect each other because he had married. Well, ho, 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 stop. Before you this go is there. what he said. Oh, he said, I I'm married and I'd like to take you to dinner. What do we think was going to happen when we got to dinner? Oh, that he was going to bring his wife. That's what we thought he was going to bring his wife. So we, we go to the dinner. Mm -hmm. And I don't want you to get ahead of the story, okay? Um, now, now, you asked me to tell the story. I know, but you don't tell you it well. You are going to tell the story. You, you don't tell, tell well. me how to tell the story. Yeah. Now, you were going to go to the bottom line. You, you see how easy going? Yes, dear. You All see right. how easy going? Uh, yes, she did. Isn't she cute? Look at them arms. Look at them arms. That girl got some guns on her. I'm prepared. Uh, okay, yeah, you do. So, so he, we go to the dinner expecting to see him and his wife, and it's just him sitting there. And we say, where's the wife? Well, he didn't say it. Well, kind of. And he said, we, 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 we're separated and on our way to divorce. Right. They're, now they're in the you process can, of getting. Okay, now you can tell the rest of the story. And, and the, he was curious about how our relationship worked. Yeah. And they had gotten married right out of school. And he had chosen. He was on a corporate well, track. Well, he was on a corporate track. I don't had, think they got married right out of school, but if I remember correctly, they were both young. They hadn't been out of school. He was on his way up to corporate. And somebody told him, you have to have- well, the advice. Uh, how do I you, don't know how many people, but the but advice which was received about you're climbing the corporate ladder and you need the right kind of partner who can climb the ladder with and you. big arm candy when you go to the arm candy when you go to the the corporate right events. Kind of communication, all of that. You look so good. They look good. They speak well. They are culture. He did that, and, and it did not last because they weren't friends. They didn't like each other. It was all about well, appearance. It was. I think it was really. It was. I would boil it down and say it was a business arrangement. Okay. All right. Okay. Right. And so what we say is this, friends first, friends first. Chapter number one in the book. And again, I hope everybody got the book. We want to encourage you. But not, they, they actually let me ended finish, up. Let, let me finish I'm Tell them so they got sorry. the audio now. Yes, they get the audio book, which is- Can they get it downloaded, sweetheart? You can get it downloaded. That makes life a lot easier. Yeah, you can download all digital, mm -hmm. jollymarriage.com. Mm -hmm. Now mm -hmm. I can say that some turned out well, and some his did not. He's still very successful, but the marriage unfortunately did not last. Two beautiful kids who, who are grown and very, very successful now. But Frederick Nietzsche said, last. it is not a lack of love, but a lack of friendship that makes unhappy marriages. Mm, that's great philosopher Nietzsche. And so how do you know if you're friends? How does that work? How do you know? Well, I mean, I'm just, I'm just saying. Okay, we 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 tell people. Okay, you need to be friends. Well, you know what I say to we, you know, your friends when you just dig, you love dig being around them. You just love that that this. As one lady said, I love my husband's dirty draws. She said, I love just being around him, anyway. and I would just bleach him, but you don't <laughs> let me do anymore because I discolor everything. All my clothes were. <laughs> Hey, Clorox stains. <laughs> I started, no, thank you, dear. I will wash my own clothes. Oh, I love clothes. you. No, I don't need you to wash I my clothes. I don't need you to wash me. my clothes. No, no, no. <laughs> That's part of the communication, though, because my wife is the, is the Clorox queen. And so I said, no, thank you, darling. No, thank you. I got it. But we are friends. We can talk about it. We can laugh at that, about that. And so uh, Brenda says, I think that if you have a good marriage and you have a good communication, you can work together. Well, it's the, you can have a good marriage, but a good marriage is dependent on the fact of whether you're friends think, or not. I think, I think the good marriage is determined by your level of communication as you define what is a good marriage. I like being around them. 
how he speaks to me. And that's an issue I was talking about with, with somebody else. I came in today. Okay, to tell him what happened today. I came in today. He uh, tells me to tell what happened. And he tells me. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I, I came in today. You, you tell stories better than I. I came in today from five days on the road uh, in San Antonio uh, at meetings and events. Beef country. Beef, and I, I don't eat beef anymore, so uh, uh, it was hard. I right? couldn't find, couldn't find. Went to places to get uh, just a chicken or a turkey sandwich, or they didn't have them. And there was no salad, so it made him appreciate his wife a little more. <laughs> anyway, I get home, and we have a house guest, and she said when I walked in, D walked in the room, right? She came upstairs from the office, and I said, "You sure look good," and I hugged her, and the house guest said, "Boy." Y'all talk good to each other. Y'all really do. It's not a. It's not a. It's not a. A game. It's not a, a role y'all put on. You really do like being around each other. That's what we want people to know. We are friends first, and and you can be friends now. Let's see. Terrence said, "You know how to be friends. We can do that because of sports teams. We can do it." Okay. A little kindness goes a long way. The key is, folks, that you dig being around that person. Here's the other thing: is that everybody plays a different role if you use a sports team analogy of which i know nothing somebody's a forward so i do know i do know that you know oh, somebody's a forward somebody's a guard oh my god i'm just so, I'm so impressed <laughs> now don't throw a quarterback in there all right uh, <laughs> don't throw I, I i know that's football but yeah there you go all right, all right but everybody has a role and and you work it together yeah. so you appreciate each other and, and in terms of our faith, it's like, you know, the arm, it, it, the hand can't work without the, attached to the arm. And that every part of the body has a particular Fits function. together. And so we have to appreciate that particular thing that that body part So, does. So first, folks, to, so to my son, uh, thank you, Will Moran. He said, great topic. We want you to know you can have a great marriage, you can have a great business, and it can be, they're not mutually exclusive. The key. It's better if you, it works better if you start out that way. What, I thought of which way? D developing the friendship. Oh yeah. And it is more difficult if you have to back into it. Now, that's well, more work. But work, that's, but it's that's, do that's work. doable as well. And less, and less expensive than the divorce. You know what I'm thinking? Uh -huh. Why can't we have a divorce your, your divorce attorney friend on for a perspective of what it's Maybe like. Maybe I'll talk to him and see if we can get him on. Okay. I, I would love that. Yeah, I think that'd be good because he's he and his wife have been married 50 years, but he's the biggest divorce attorney mm -hmm. in Maryland. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we've got a piece in the chapter number one. Now, this is very important because we realize everybody is not where we were. Some people are out in the boat and they realize they're not friends. Now, we and said. They don't want to be. No, 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 no. The only reason they don't want to be is because they don't know how to be. Oh, okay. All right. That, 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 they got married for a reason. Now, here's what well, we Well, you already said they got married for a reason. They got married for a reason because that one had money. Right, whatever. And but they weren't friends. They weren't it. friends. So how do we help them get to be friends? Well, on page number 19, it says, befriending. So here's, I'm going to read a little bit. Successful marriages are made of friendships plus physical attraction. But great marriages are more than good looks and good sex. If you are not married to someone who is a good friend, hopefully your best friend, then you need to start working on improving your friendship right now. How do you do that? You befriend your spouse. You befriend your spouse just as you would befriend someone else walking down the street and keep close to them. How, well, you learn how do you work together, find things you can do together. We've learned, we have all learned to like things that we dish, initially didn't like or didn't care for. We see it every day. Many of us have learned to like songs we didn't like the first time we heard them. But over time, we may have come to love those songs and claim they are. That's my song. In the same way, you can learn to like a song, you can enjoy and learn to like your spouse. Let me, let me add here that in some instances, we might have one part of the marriage who will listen in and the other who won't. Right. Yeah. And you can start to befriend your spouse, even if the spouse is oblivious to the fact that the relationship isn't in the right place. I'm mm -hmm. saying that one party by making a decision, you know what, just just 
and I, and I had, I can't think of a lady, well, anyway, uh, I talked about that with, with um, a lady who questioned about the idea of friendship. She says, well, I'm married, and how can I be married to somebody and, and be their friend? That, that, that was like a oh, wow. wow. That was interesting. So we had, we had to talk that through. Wow. For uh, something, if I'm married to this person, that's different. And that's why, and you know what? That's a, that's a paradigm. Mm -hmm. And that paradigm comes from television, from movies, from media, mm -hmm. where you have a girl's trip mm -hmm. or, or mm -hmm. a guy's trip. Mm -hmm. I, look, I went away on, I went away on business, but I didn't, it wasn't a guy's trip. It was to go figure out how to make more money to bring it back to you. Okay. So I, and that's rare. And that was because we, I didn't decide to go to the last moment. And we already had arranged for a house guest to come. And D said, well, I can't leave now because we usually travel together. So I'm saying to everybody, uh, oh, oh, hey, Terrence said, the new playbook is make love, make money, make it last for all your marriages to, to, to have a winning team. Educate the team with the new playbook and the new playbook mm, as our good. marriage book. Thank you, Terrence. That's good. We hope that you will use it as a playbook mm -hmm. and that you will take the principles and the lessons that we share in there about the people whose lives. It really is. A, it really is a paradigm shift, though, uh -huh. to say, you know what? I'm I'm married to this person, but I never thought about them as being my friend. Well, it's a paradigm shift. Yeah. yeah. And so we want this to be yes. the playbook that you can use. And that's why we want to encourage people. To go to see the TED Talk, it's important because you. That's it's funny too. It's, it's funny. funny. It's funny. It's good. So it's a great just jumping on jollymarriage.com, mm -hmm. and then get two copies of the book. Go and get two copies. We want your marriage to be healthy and whole and happy and friendly and funny. Two good copies of the book, and at the end of each chapter, talk to you. I had another guy met at the at the conference. I didn't even talk to you. I told you about this yet. So we haven't had a chance to yeah, talk I mean, to We you haven't debrief. I got in and we went right to work and I had to get ready for the day. So this gentleman has got a million dollar business. Mm -hmm. Very successful. And then at the reception, I, I, I said something to him and he said, I said, I said something like, I can tell you're a man of faith and I'm so glad to meet you. He said, I've got a problem though. I said, well, what's your problem? Just out of the blue, he says. Yes, he says, uh, and he says, would you pray for me? I said, sure, I'll pray for you. Yeah. He said, my wife left me. Really? Yes, my wife just left me a few months ago, six months ago. And, and he said, and it's real bad. And I said, oh. and so I just said, You told him to go get two copies of the book, right? No, no. <laughs> I told I'm him, being, let me, tell, let me tell you what I told him. I said, I'm going to send you, I'm not even going to make you go to see the TED Talk. I'm going to send it to you. And here's what I want you to do. Mm -hmm. I want you to watch it. Then I want you to call your wife mm -hmm. and say, I heard this guy. I met this guy at the conference. I was impressed with him. And his, his new TED Talk is phenomenal. But I want your opinion. But you didn't ask him why his wife would walk out on him. Well, I asked always them, more to the story. I asked, them, I asked them, was it due to financial pressure? Because he, he was open and honest about the fact that the, the pandemic struggle. the pandemic impacted his business and he had a he had a big debt service every month he bought a company. And what does that mean? A big debt? What does that mean? A he had like a hundred grand a month to when, pay out. To pay out on his debt service for the company. Mm -hmm. Even though the company had gone, he bought it six months before the pandemic hit, mm -hmm. and it went. Phew, so he had to start laying off people, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and but he still had to pay his debt. Well, he had a note. He used to yes. he had a note to pay because he, bought, he borrowed money to buy the business. That's right. And the profit part of the business went in the toilet. That's right. That's but he still had to meet the nut. Yeah. Week. So he's his money's coming out of his savings, out of his whatever. Mm -hmm. I said, is that the reason? He said, no. He said, that's not the reason. I said, what's the reason? He said, she, we did not have any children together. Mm -hmm. This is my second marriage. I had four children that I brought to the marriage. Oh. And her father died. Oh. And when her father died, that was a, 
she didn't have anybody to hold on to. She but didn't she have her own, him. Well, she didn't have her own child. She didn't have anybody for her nuclear family. She didn't have, and she's kind of being the parent. And he, he said she just changed. We don't know the reason. There's more to it. He gave me a synopsis. I said, though, we have had people over these last couple of years since we wrote the book who were on their way to divorce court or had filed. And we gave them the same advice. Read the book together. So she left him, but they're not divorced yet. That's so correct. Saying. And I said, there's hope. because y'all. And even if they were divorced, you yeah. know, uh, Johnny Parker said he, his parents. His parents got had, divorced. Got divorced, divorced for years. For years. Mm -hmm. And then found some new information mm -hmm. and new uh, paradigms. And they remarried and their son did the ceremony. So we are saying, that's what a great story. story. We got yeah. stories like that. So that's what we want to say to everybody. It's possible it's and it's hope. We don't want you to break up. We want you to stay together. We want you to be the best. Thank you, Harvey, Harvey Austin, for this it, shirt. It, it requires a recognition on both people's parts that, yes, I am. There's something here worth saving. Yes. And let us try. So, friends. And sometimes it's one person trying. And the other person is like clueless. But that's why we got, that's why we did the TED Talk. That's why we did these things to try and give them new paradigms. Mm -hmm. The input determines output. When you change the input, so what, you what change the output. Sinbad and his wife also what? Oh, also they had the same situation? Okay. Uh, uh, and and uh, What, also got remarried? Yeah, I think I you're right. Know. They did get remarried. You're right. Uh, oh, uh, that's good. So look, our time is just about up. You know, we do a half hour. Uh, we got coming up, is it next week or the week after? A financial hour that is going to be a power hour. But next week, oh, tell them what's going to be on next week. Tell them what's going to be on next week. Where oh, they go? Ooh, uh, hey. I forgot now. See? Ah, it's going to be on next week. What you do with next week? We oh, got a, we got a powerhouse the next week. You know, you say that about everything. Well, this That's one is true. a good one. Next week is a good one. Uh, it's about. Let me see. Let's see where it went. Oh, it's, it's, uh, planning sex. Uh, 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 oh, no. The fancy word was... Um, a sex rendezvous, a sex a sex date, a de putting a sex in a sex... So she said something about how a sex date in your schedule can help your marriage. Something to that effect. Spon it was spontaneous versus... Because we talked about... Planned that. versus spontaneous. So it was spontaneous versus planned sex. And the research says it's almost it's almost equal, but it leans towards that planned sex brings more excitement because when when you end up like when our kids were growing up, there was always oh you better get it in. The room. You better get it in <laughs> while you can. <laughs> but but when you plan it. You can have the let the excitement build over the Ooh. day. Oh, look, call, right? join us next week. We're going to no. talk about that. <laughs> I think planned sex is better. Well, my plan is that we're going <laughs> to in about five minutes. All right, look. Well, you know, tell all your background that you already did it, but. <laughs> I won't go into detail. <laughs> hey, look, when I get home from the road, brother got to get. It used to be a standard thing, though, and the running joke there was when you come in from the road, we don't immediately go to bed, then that may, you must have been out with somebody else while, while I wasn't. And there. that ain't happening. So I come home, I get in the shower, and we go at it, okay? And I still got it. I still got it. I still got it. Anyway, all right, we're gone. We're going to go with our music from my jazz album, Close to You. Thank you. Why do birds suddenly appear every time you are near? Just like me, they long to be close to you.